Here's more of my interview with 95-year-old Harold Brock of Waterloo, Iowa, chief engineer on both the Ford 9N and John Deere 4020 tractors. Well, Harold, now you, after Ford in the late 50s, uh, you went to work for John Deere, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And that, what year was that? 1959. 1959, you went to work for Deere. And what was your, your title for Deere? I was an assistant research engineer. Okay. Yeah. And so the, the kind of the mission at that time for Deere in the late 50s was to develop a... a it's the new generation of tractors. Okay. The 3010, 4010 tractor. Okay, the 10 series. So now we're coming up on a 50-year anniversary yes. of the release of those. And tell me what the early days with Deere were like back in the late 50s, early 60s. Well, it was um, a complete reorganization for Deere. It was a, a major change that Deere as great as we had in the model going from the Model T to the Model A mm -hmm. at Ford. Everything was changed except okay. for paint. Mm. And that was true with Deer. Okay. Everything was going to with a clean sheet of paper. There wasn't going to be any carryover of the old design. Mm. So the only thing was carried over was the green and yellow paint. And how many engineers were involved? Well, they just had a handful of engineers to start. Okay. And maybe half a dozen. And then they hired a lot of new graduates sure. uh, in uh, 50, in the 50, late 59 okay. period, and uh, they were just out of college, and um, and so we we got up to probably a thousand in, in engineers. Thousand engineers. And um, but most of them had never designed anything for high production. Okay. Um, but good engineers. So. Well, the now the 10 series was so successful. What are your recollections as that uh, model series rolled out and that it was so well received by well, the it, public? We, we uh, it took about four years to the four, five years to develop that. Okay. And we had an excellent help both from the industrial design group of Dreyfus as well as uh, uh, engineering from outside helping us. Uh, okay. Uh, we had uh, uh, Kennedy, the president's uh, uh, orthopedic doctor come and help us design the seat. John F. Kennedy's yeah. orthopedic doctor yeah. helped you design yeah. the seat for the yeah. 10 series? Right. And we were, were really careful about ergonomics and, and everything was going to be powered powered by hydraulics. Right. Uh, which was unique to have a, yes. a new hydraulic system, which right. was unique to the industry, by the way. Sure. And so the whole tractor really advanced all the state of the art, and the three-point hitch was advanced in its capabilities mm. over the little Ford tractor. Mm. So it really advanced the whole state of the art of the tractor what industry. Do you, what do you remember about that time period, Harold, from the customer feedback level that was coming back to Deere through the dealers that were really well received on the 10 series? Well, we were concerned because we said now we're going to this high-speed engine from the old putt putts, okay. and the farmers may not like that and uh, think it's going to wear itself out. Uh, but we kept the piston speed of the new engines the same as the old two cylinders. So, okay. Uh, but we were concerned about that. And the other thing that we were concerned about and, and uh, was the fact that they decided that if they could use three-point hitch equipment okay. uh, instead of drawbar equipment, right, which we put on the tractor that. Um, it need more horsepower. We could run it faster instead of running those old drags at two mile an hour. We want right. to run them at five mile an hour. Well, to do that, the horsepower goes up exponentially. Mm -hmm. It's a need of speed. So anyway, we went from about 45 horsepower up to uh, 50 and, and 80. Was it 50 and 80? About mm -hmm. 50 and 80. Mm -hmm. 30, 10 and 40, 10. Uh, to run faster. Okay. Well, now what happened was that a lot of farmers bought the tractor, but they wanted to use the old equipment, not yeah. buying three-point hitch equipment. Sure. So when they tried to pull these old things at, at two miles an hour, the little tractors didn't weigh enough. Uh, yeah. So we had to quickly put more weight into the, the 3010, 40 Okay. But it was designed gear-wise to take that extra weight. Right. It didn't shorten the life any. Wow. But we were concerned about the fact that uh, would farmers accept the higher speed engine and all. So well, now, okay, we roll through the 10 series. Now we're look, we're coming up on the 20 series, 1964. Tell me about that thought process and what went into that. Well, we had um, in the 20 series, we 
We didn't have the power shift transmission on the 10 series, and right. and, um, and we designed a new transmission, completely new, uh, which is very successful. Never had any complaints. Yeah. And um, and then uh, uh, one of our test people got killed in, uh, at nighttime with a loader test, um, and we started work on a roll guard and mm. a safety cam. Okay. So we ended up. You know, being the first industry to do that, wow. it took quite a bit of research to do it I properly. Uh, so that puts deer in first place. Mm -hmm. the rest of the group didn't have that. Sure. So the 20 series nearly got off to a big boost by those two things: the power shift transmission right. and the and the um, fact. Well, and then we also Waterloo also designed the first industrial equipment for deer too. Okay. And you had a hand in, in that yeah, line too. We were involved okay. In that. Okay. Now you worked for Deer until the '80s, Harold. Uh, yeah, '85. I think. Yeah. '85. Okay. And you're by the along the way you attained the title. What was it? Worldwide. I was the first director of worldwide tractor design. Wow. So kind of the main tractor design guy for the mm -hmm. for the for the main main egg company in the world that's uh yeah. well, we got him in first place that's yeah <laughs> you sure did harold that's awesome what do you remember about uh, the the 70s and 80s with deer what what uh were some challenges or achievements that really uh that well, stick with you continued to advance you know state of the art of, of comfort and uh convenience for the consumer the right farmer. right and so that they can do more productive work with one man hour and one woman hour. Right. And so having one horse and... Now that's how I was going to say, that sounds like an echo of Henry Ford's mission yeah. there, doesn't it? That <laughs> kind of stuck with you, I think, Harold, didn't it? Yeah, well, when you think of a woman or a child now can run 500 horses out in front instead of one horse. Right. And they don't have to put the horse away at night and take care of them. Yeah. Pull them off. Yeah, so now I asked you before, uh, we were just visiting, but when you look at a modern tractor, um, Deere's new tractor or, you know, Case International, Ford, what, what, do you, what do you think of these massive rigs with GPS and auto steer? And well, I think it's marvelous that they can do that, yeah. Because, you know, original design, the little Ford uh, 9N was the first tractor to have an automotive design. Hmm. Uh, the rest of the industry just has some sheet metal that they're bent square. Okay. Uh, and and the little line in was designed in 30, 39 looked like a Mercury Mercury design mm. car. Wow. Uh, and it had sheet metal that had forms to it, y'all. You know. Okay. So deer and the industry back in that time in 39 was very rugged looking with no sheet metal at all hardly on. Mm -hmm. And of course over a period of time Dreyfus Group did a marvelous job of re rehashing the design of the vehicle. So it was kind of a teamwork yeah, so aspect there. And we have materials that are more stretchable and we got into plastics, okay. which we didn't have originally. Right. And so the whole industry makes it much more attractive hmm. uh, units. Well, what about Harold? Uh, okay, these iconic tractors you had a hand in developing, your 8Ns, your 4010s, 3020s, 4020s, and right on down the line. When you see that they're still such a staple of the, you know, working agriculture out there. Um, and I see that every day, um, talking to farmers all over the country. That has to give you kind of a neat feeling inside, I would imagine, to have designed these tractors, and they're, they're still doing the job all these decades later. Well, I'm proud of what we accomplished. I, I mean, it's accomplished, but it's weren't just me. Sure. So I my staff. I always had a good staff, but I also kept myself very involved in the design area. Mm-hmm. I was never an office paperwork person, and I got that from Mr. Ford, too. But, uh, <laughs> he didn't have anyone. Only a paper we could have with Mr. Ford was what you carry in your pocket. That's why I got these old cards. There you go. So uh, I always want to be the, the project engineer, too. You know, so, <laughs> and I'm so proud of what we've done as an industry. Right. It wasn't just deer. You know, the rest of the industry did right. a nice job. Right. Well, that's pretty cool, Harold. It's... Uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to visit with with me today. And, uh, gosh, I think a lot of people are going to find your insights into the development of all these classic tractors uh, fascinating. It's just been uh, terrific. Thanks again. Well, it's been a labor of love.